everybody, every single person on the planet does it, but how much do we really know about the basic human function of sleep? Why We Sleep is a book that takes a look at how sleeping affects our brains and bodies and our lives. Joining me now is the book's author and a leading world expert on sleep, Dr. Matthew Walker. It's great to have you here. Very nice to meet you. Thank you for having me. So there's been really kind of an explosion about research on brain science, sleep, and dreams in the last decade or two. Why is that? Well, I think the technologies that we have, the methods that we have to explore this thing called sleep have really advanced dramatically, brain science in particular. But that has happened in a perfect storm in actually a negative way where total sleep time has started to diminish dramatically throughout the industrialized world. So we're sleeping less and we're starting to understand the damage that that mm -hmm. lack of sleep does because every major disease that seems to be killing us in the developed world now has significant links to a lack of sleep. Really? Like? So that ranges from Alzheimer's to cancer. It ranges from diabetes, obesity, cardiovascular disease, stroke, even suicide now has significant and causal links to insufficient sleep. We also know from epidemiological data a rather sad truth, which is that the shorter your sleep, the shorter your life. Short sleep predicts all-cause mortality. Wow. And, uh, you know, we work in a business, and you know all about this, where everybody sort of um, prides themselves on how little sleep they get or need to, you know, to keep going. How do we combat that a bit so that people understand this is not a laziness thing? You need a certain amount of sleep to function as a human. It's so difficult. I mean, there are a number of forces that are sort of gripping our sleep and squeezing it down to a, a small size. One of them, though, is that sleep has an image problem. That it we does. Actually, we need to re rehabilitate sleep. <laughs> we, we do. We, we really do. do. And for, for critical reason. You know, I think we stigmatize sleep with this label mm -hmm. of laziness. And people are almost proud to brag about how little sleep that they're right. getting. Because I think in this day and age, it reflects or is a measure that you can use to reflect how busy you are. And if it seems as though you're busy, perhaps that means that you're important. So. It's one of those ways that people can sort mm -hmm. of express that. Um, but we also know there are many other factors that are diminishing sleep. We know that commute times are longer, total work hours are longer. Right. So people are leaving the house earlier, they're coming home later. And they're working at home. They're working at home. We know that caffeine and alcohol markedly bad for sleep um, in, in unique ways. So I also think anxiety is a problem too. Mm -hmm. You know, if you look at rates of anxiety throughout most first world nations, they are higher. And that is one of the greatest enemies of sleep at night. You know, constantly right. we are on this mode of reception during the day. And the only time that we switch over into reflection is when our head hits the pillow, and that's the last time that the roller decks of concern should actually start right. spinning in the mind. And that's what we call it, a brain spin, right? You know, you're just thinking and you can't stop. So how do we sleep better if we're not? I'm, I imagine everybody, does anybody here think they sleep perfectly? So that would be a zero. Yeah. Um, so what do we need to do to work on this? Well, the probably six tips, I think, for better sleep. The first is that you have to prioritize it mm -hmm. and give yourself a non-negotiable eight-hour opportunity is the recommendation. The next thing is to keep it regular. So go to bed at the same time, wake up at the same time, no matter whether it's the weekday or the weekend. That's a critical piece of advice. Another aspect is darkness at night mm -hmm. because we are a dark-deprived society. And you need darkness to release a hormone in the brain called melatonin. And melatonin times the healthy onset of sleep. So power down the lights at night. We only need half of them on. No iPads, no laptops. They damage the release of melatonin. Next is keep it cool. Your body needs really? to drop its temperature to get to sleep and stay asleep. So that's probably the reason that you've always found it difficult to fall asleep in a room that's too cold versus too hot. Sort of. Uh, sorry, fall asleep in a room that's too hot versus too cold, because okay. at least the cold room is taking you in the right direction for good sleep. Interesting. So about 68 degrees is actually optimal for sleep. Sounds too cold, but it actually is perfect. The next thing is don't stay in bed awake. If you stay in bed awake for, let's say, 15 or 20 minutes, mm -hmm. your brain starts to learn a, the association between the bed being about being awake. And people will tell me, you know, I'm falling asleep watching television, and then I get into bed and I'm wide awake and I don't know why. It's because you may be staying yeah. in bed awake 
and building that connection. So the advice is don't do that. Get up, go to a different room, dim light, read a book, and only when you're sleepy return to bed and you will relearn the association between the Isn't bedroom being about sleep. The final thing is alcohol and caffeine, and it, this makes me deeply unpopular. I'm so sorry to say. Yeah, this, I'm not gonna like this. You're not go gonna ahead. like this one uh, on ahead. both counts, but um, cease caffeine after 2 p.m. Oh, I can do that. That's it's great. It's the next one that I'm not gonna be able yeah. to do. <laughs> and and, and ca caffeine is a tricky one too, because some people will say, you know, obviously we know that caffeine is an alerting drug, mm -hmm. but some people can have a drink of coffee after dinner and say, I fall asleep fine. The problem with that is even if you fall asleep, the depth of the deep sleep that you get is not as deep versus when you okay. haven't had a cup of coffee. So you may fall asleep and you may wake up the next morning feeling unrefreshed and you don't link it with the cup of coffee. That's interesting. Because you say, well, I, I didn't wake up, I didn't have a difficult time falling asleep. It's because you were in a shallower type of sleep because of that caffeine bathing the brain. Is decaf okay? Um, decaf is okay, but some brands and some concoctions can be anywhere between five to up to 30% caffeinated. So decaffeinated is not no caffeine. Okay. People should be aware of that. So right, if you have good. three cups of sort of decaf, it may actually be on the way to a normal cup of coffee. Mm -hmm. The final aspect is alcohol. So sorry. <laughs> um, he can just tell by looking at me that I'm I not know, having this. I know. I know. I'm right. the bearer of bad news. So um, most people think a nightcap helps them fall asleep. It's not true. Alcohol is a class of drugs that we call the sedatives, and sedation is not sleep. So what you're doing is actually just sedating your brain and mm -hmm. fooling yourself into thinking that it helps you fall asleep faster. The second part of alcohol is that you actually wake up many more times throughout the night. It fragments your sleep. But those awakenings are so brief that you tend not to remember them. So you wake up again the next morning feeling unrefreshed and you don't quite know why. The final thing about alcohol is that it actually blocks your dream sleep or what we call rapid really? eye movement sleep. It's quite powerful at doing that. And no matter when in the day you've you've taken in the alcohol. Well, that's the. Not that I'm going to start drinking at yeah, breakfast. That's I'm the, just yeah, curious. The, the, <laughs> the, the, the profoundly um, a sort of incorrect advice that I would never give on television would be that you should go to p the pub in the morning, yeah. have the alcohol, <laughs> and then by the time it's bedtime, it's out your system, and so it won't affect. But I would Perfect. never, I would never say such a thing. Yeah. So you're those gonna, would be the tips for better sleep. You're going to stick around for our wellness panel, right? I will And indeed. answer a few more questions. Thank you very much. We will talk to Dr. Walker next as we answer all your health questions. Stay tuned. Thank you. Yeah.